What's up everyone, it's Ice Minoz, aka J, and in today's video, I've got for you guys some Ghost in the Shell First Assault Standalone Complex Online. Yes, <laughs> that's a long name, but really should know it as Ghost in the Shell First Assault. Now this is a free-to-play, published by Nexon. Uh, you can get early access to this game on Steam if you wish. Low price of around $6. So let's talk about the gameplay a little bit. Now, it's quite interesting how this game performs on, on many different levels. When I first started playing, the gunplay and the weapons perform between a mix of Dirty Bomb, Black Ops 1, and Battlefield 3. The game modes are pretty simple, you got Team Deathmatch, Search and Destroy, your basic stuff. Although there are specialist abilities, that's the best way to describe them, that increase your speed, where you gain armor, regain health, a bunch of different options. I'm not personally a fan of this system, mainly because the way that First Assault really plays out, I think they could have done much better without having it in there. I think that the first person shooter category is looking for a really simple shooter that's just, you know, take, just strip it down to its core, just where you need to shoot stuff. And I think this game does it almost better than anyone else in that aspect. When I'm actually in gunfights, I don't think there's any other shooter right now that I prefer. The maps remind me of Battlefield 3's TDM, which if you know my channel or know me, I love Battlefield 3's TDM. I spent 2,000 hours playing it, so uh, that's pretty legit. Going back to these abilities that the players have, they can be somewhat annoying, mainly due to the fact that comboing, let's say, the knife with increased speed can be almost impossible to shoot down in some scenarios. All you have to do is dodge and weave and you can just one-shot somebody in the back with a knife and that can be extremely frustrating to play against. But on the other hand, there are particular abilities that I do like. For example, increasing your armor and recovering health. That is something that I always use and it's something that helps me a lot. Now among the vast abilities that you have, you also have weapons uh, and obviously the customization system, which I think is really good. Now I'll get into this maybe in in another video in depth, but I think it does a lot of things right. I believe you have something like 5,000 different options to choose from, so there's a lot going on here. If you want to put a uh, drum, what is it, the drum magazine where you could have basically uh, 50 bullets in your mag on an assault rifle, you can totally do that. So there are a bunch of different options here for uh, what you're really trying to build in terms of a weapon. If you want it to have a lot of power, you'll have to sacrifice uh, movement speed to get that power and I think that's really interesting the way they balance things out now when it comes to the free-to-play elements it's really hard to tell at this point whether it's going to be a pay to win or not but from what I've seen so far it doesn't seem to be although that could obviously change in the future on its full releases and updates now while I'm in the game and for the majority of the time I'm having fun there are many times where I'm having huge connectivity issues this could come down to the fact that when I try to connect to an Australian server while I do find matches, the problem is it appears that there are hosts within the servers, which doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know how this works. I hope someone can please correct me or at least inform me how the servers work on this game because it appears when I join a server, there are hosts within them because when a host leaves the game, the match will actually leave and the, it'll say changing host. So I don't get how there can be servers and then within the servers, there are hosts. It makes no sense at all. This leads to very frustrating connectivity issues, especially lag and jittering when it comes to your gunfights, which can be absolutely game-breaking. Now this doesn't happen to everybody, this happens to maybe I'd say 20% of people from what I've seen. It's not a thing that happens to a lot of people. Now, uh, friends who I was playing with weren't having connection issues, but I myself was. Now, this could change in the future, of course, because they'll uh, provide server updates and whatnot, but that's something to keep in mind. The sound design is good and the graphics are good. You've got all those bases covered. So as an overall package, it presents a lot. I think it's a genuinely fun game when it comes down to it. Although there are a few issues right now that I think are game-breaking and a few things I think they need to tweak here and there. I think they're onto something and I will be definitely playing this game more and I definitely recommend you guys at least try this game out. It's not to say that you'll love it or you know whatnot. It can be very frustrating to get stabbed by you know guys just going 200 kilometers an hour just stabbing you in the back and whatnot but I think this game is at least worth trying out. 
And if you do try it out, let me know in the comment section below. Hell, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this game, even if you haven't played it. Are you looking forward to trying it? Are you not even going to bother? Let me know all in the comment section below. But there it is, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like, share, subscribe, and peace.